Here we are looking at Anvil Studio's homepage. It contains links to a wealth of MIDI related information. In my first Anvil Studio tutorial, I described how to create a simple rhythm track from scratch using the Piano Roll Editor. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use MIDI rhythm tracks that are available on the internet. To find these tracks, click on Links, and then MIDI Database Free MIDI Files. Now I'm presuming that you have a song for which you need a rhythm track and have an idea of its rhythmic feel. Here at the top are some categories of rhythmic feels. Rock, pop, themes, rap, dance, punk, blues, country and even a search feature. For a demonstration I've chosen Michael Jackson's Billie Jean which I'll download to my desktop. Here we are in Anvil Studio. Before we open our downloaded MIDI file, go to View and select Piano Roll Editor. To open Billy Jean, File, Open Song, Desktop, BillyJean.mid. The mixer should now contain the eight tracks that make up this version of Billie Jean. If you'd rather not see the help notes below here, go to View, Options, and under the General tab, uncheck Show Help at the bottom of the screen. And while we're here, We'll change the active track's background color to yellow and back. The mixer, which I described briefly in my first tutorial, contains the volume and left and right speaker controls for each track. To the right of the mixer is this panel containing an overview of the song. Here, the notes contained in each track can be seen in relation to each other. We can jump to any point in the song by clicking on a bar number at the top here. This slider on the left allows horizontal scrolling through the song. Let's play a few bars. Rhythm track. Bass track, strings, lead vocal. As you can hear, the vocal part is hardly convincing. However, if we set the volume of this track to zero, we suddenly have a perfectly serviceable karaoke version of Billie Jean. Not only that, but if you find the present version too high or too low for your voice, we can change the key by going to Track, Transpose or Tracks in Song and enter in a plus or minus number here. If you happen to be a bass player and would like to practice your part, just set the bass volume to zero. If you're a bass player and would like to play along but don't know the notes, activate the bass track, edit track, and simply read off the notes on the keyboard to the left. This is an F sharp. This is a C sharp. If you sing and play an instrument, by setting the volumes of the parts you wish to play to zero, you've effectively created a personal backing band. 
But what about our rhythm track? To see what this track consists of, activate the drum track. If no notes are visible in the grid below, we check the overview panel to see whereabouts in the song we are. We find ourselves at bar 14 and see that there should be drum notes somewhere in the grid. And so using the slider on the right, we scroll down to the lowest note where the bass drum lives and we should find some notes. This rhythm track is in fact identical to the rhythm track I used in my first tutorial. Here's, here's the bass drum, snare, hi-hat. Shorter note values have been used, but it sounds exactly the same. Notice this section of keyboard on the left. When electric keyboards first became capable of creating drum sounds, each drum sound was assigned to a numbered key. For example, if we click on Add Sounds, we find that the bass drum, the lowest note displayed, has been assigned to MIDI note 36. Here's where that is in relation to middle C, MIDI note 48. But never mind that. Define which drums have been assigned to which keys. Click in a note next to a key and hear for yourself. I'm telling you this in case at some point you may wish to add more percussion sounds to your rhythm track. For instance, you may wish to add a cymbal at some crucial point in a song, or change the feel of a bridge section and so on. The rhythm track here is completely editable. For now, however, the only change you'll probably need in order to get your song off the ground is to set the volumes of the tracks you don't want to hear to zero. And change the tempo. And this is exactly how I ended my last tutorial. To change the tempo, go to the top here, where the tempo is displayed in beats per minute, and change the number. Higher for a faster tempo, lower for a slower one.